who joins them? Well, it's going to be it's, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. It's a tough call. We just have to wait a bit. It's going to be a tough that call. one last yeah, game. Yeah, that one last game. We just have to wait for that spot. I don't know who's going to join them, but it's going to be tough. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. Let's um, also quickly listen to the uh, chairman of the um, LMC League Management Company, that's Sheo uh, Diko, talking about the developments in the league. We'll listen to him and we'll go on with the show. Jumps again. There are gaps. There are things that need to be done to, uh, to see that we jumpstart the, the, the football economy in Nigeria. And three things came to mind, which are number one, we need to recognize our football and our sports in general as a national asset, which means government can be able to give a lot of concessions, a lot of support, a lot of drive to get it to the next level. Secondly, we need to have legislations and regulations in place that will create the enabling environment to get the sports to develop and football in particular to do that. Uh, so many regulations is required, uh, but number one is the broadcasting regulations. All over the world, it is the broadcasting revenues, the broadcasting investment and money that drives sports development. About 80% of the money that drives sports anywhere in the world is from broadcasting revenues. And also, even the 20% is driven by broadcasting, because the sponsors that come to align with sports will work, will be there because the, the broadcasting is there. So we need to, so we need to sort out our, our broadcasting code, our broadcasting rules, to make it perfect, to support, protect, and drive our local content. We need to also have specific regulations that will be able to, um, to support the industries and the businesses and everybody involved with sports, like tax breaks, like special concessions and what have you for everybody involved in sports. We need to also have specific sports regulations that drive the, the governance, the credibility, the reporting cycles of sports to make sure everything is transparent. It's good. That has to be done. The, number th the third one is to have the investment infrastructure that is needed to put a development fund for sports development. The same way they put development funds for agriculture, for entertainment industry, and what have you. We need to have that kind of fund for sports so that it can be accessed, not to go and give people to run sports, no, to put the right infrastructure required to go to the next level. And if you do that, everything will come to play. For example, let me give you a certain uh, example. For, if now we said we, we took a decision that we need to use all the uh, local JCs made in Nigeria for all our sports. And now we create, we give the money for the people to set up the factories. In, in football alone, we can be able to do merchandising over, over 100 million kids a year, for example, if everything is done rightly. That is over 500 billion of Naira economy being created. Chairman of the LMC, Cheo uh, Diko, talking about how, how um, we can bring developments uh, in, into the Nigerian League, how revenue can be generated. Cecilia, you are uh, listening to him, and I mean, I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah. But these things yeah. can be done, really. Yeah, it can, because you know, it, was, uh, it was at the NESG, that's talking about Nigeria Economy Summit, you know, on Wednesday, and you know, it, it had to identify like three different gaps. Those things he spoke like, about. Those things he spoke about that we are actually suffering. The fact that, you know, there's really no policy. You know, when you don't have policy, actually governing maybe tax uh, rebates and the, the, the concession they talked about, and also the fact that you also need a kind of a special fund, you know, in sport. Like they've been able to rescue the entertainment industry, yes. the agricultural industry, and all that. When you have this fund, not just in the hands of some private individuals, but it's there where they can actually access it. And the fact that you can also have the infrastructure. If you have these things, then you can really all build right. on it. I mean, he mentioned, what he mentioned that I actually love, the example he gave was the fact that if you have a, a kind of a factory where uh, there's a policy that all the jerseys that the clubs will wear can be manufactured in Nigeria, and if they can do that, then you look at the revenue that's going to come to these clubs and not going outside the shores of the country to get these jerseys and come here and all that. So these clubs can actually make revenue without having to rely on government. Yeah. But then the government will have to drive it, yeah. but they need the, those policies so that everything can work. Broadcasting rights yeah. also that he talked about <laughs> is also another important uh, aspect you also have to look at. Yeah, and if I, as a, as a comic relief, uh, maybe we should start saying, if you're coming to watch any of these local league games, <laughs> wear our jerseys. I'm just start coming what with my jersey. But there's no law that can yeah, back that up anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but interestingly, like Cecilia uh, pointed out as well, too, he was really... Um, how do I put this now? Is it's taking the government to task here, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, especially in terms of those uh, policies. And but you also mentioned infrastructure as well. So you've been to the uh, stadiums uh, across the country for uh, the NPFL sites, and let's talk about those ones mm -hmm. that top tier. Um, a lot of them 
facilities, not nothing to write them about. That's true. And we all know the, these clubs don't even own them. Uh, a lot of them are owned by the states, uh, the the states. states and uh, that's something that has to be worked on. Yeah, it has to be worked on. But though, you know, this is not the first time we're hearing this. Right. That's the truth about it. Every season they come out, they tell us they want to work on this, they want to work on infrastructure. At the end of the day, nothing is being done. But 